<clears throat> there are statements that were made, and we're going to talk about one of them real quick. <clears throat> there was a question that says um, in Mark 4, 15, yeah. Um, how does the enemy, yeah, Mark chapter 4, verse 15, how does the enemy snatch the word out of our heart? Remember I told you what's important, the enemy comes to steal the word out of your heart, to snatch the word out of your heart. Um, how does he do that? Okay, and then it says, what is the cure for that? And then what is the prevention against it? Okay, let's start with the last one first. What's the prevention against it? Renew your mind. <clears throat> Draw that, in other words, now how do you do that? Anytime you renew your mind, you also have to, um, there's, an act, there's an action that's in, that, that is, there has to be an action that follows along with what you're studying or what you're putting into your mind. The action seals it, okay? So it's like you're learning, you're hearing, you're saying, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, but until you do it, it's not sealed. Now, you hear in Mark chapter 4, and it says that the enemy came to steal that word that was sown in their heart. Okay, how did he do that? Well, he does it usually by giving you evidence that says the word you learned is not true. So if you learn about healing, usually very soon after that, you are tested, if you want to say that, by the enemy. In other words, he comes and usually tries to make you sick so that you have a choice of deciding, oh, healing must not be true because here I am sick. And so he gives you physical evidence to contradict the word. If you take that thought and agree with it, then that word is stolen and you have to go back again and try to get it back and then work through it all over again. <clears throat> if at that point, whenever he comes to steal that word by trying to make you sick or whatever it is, your reaction to that, if he tries to make you sick in the area of hearing the word on healing, then you would stand and say, okay, I know what my body is experiencing, but the truth is this. And you make that stand, and once you do that, then that passes. That's him, listen, you feeling sick is him trying to steal that word. That's what it is. Symptoms. Yeah, it is, it is symptoms. Okay? So the idea is that if you stand and make that stand. Now, you have to remember, and I'm just going to say this very, well, I, can't, I don't have a lot of time to be able to say it, so I'm going to say it very quickly. You, okay, you, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, now, when you get sick, what feels bad? Your body. Not your soul necessarily, even though it maybe could, maybe it makes you depressed or you feel, you know, but, it, but it's emotions, right? It has something to do, but you choose to do that. Now, what part is left? Spirit, right. So if you feel sick, it is your body that gets sick. Your spirit does not get sick. Right? So now remember, so is that it? We agree on that. Your spirit does not get sick. Your body gets sick, but your spirit doesn't, right? Now, and we just said that you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And now, if, if you look at yourself and you say, this is my body, you don't say, this is me. Yes. Right? Yes. Why? Because your body is not you. So if your spirit doesn't get sick and, and you are the spirit, you are, you are that spirit, right? right? And your body is not you, and it's your body that gets sick, then do you get sick? No. There you go. So the enemy tries to get you to believe in something that didn't even affect in you. You hear that? It gets you, it hits your body. But your body is not you. Because if your body was you, the Bible says that when the spirit leaves the body, the body without the spirit is what? Dead. And it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, how, if your body is you, how could you be absent from your body? Yeah. See, but if your body is you, then you could not be absent from your body because your body is you. So you can never separate your body from you. Does, does this make sense to you? Yeah. So the next time you feel sick, just because you feel sick doesn't mean you are sick. Right? It can be an attack. It could be all kinds of things. Right? 
you know, it, it could be, well, it could be a lot of things. We, again, we don't have time to go into it all. All I'm trying to get across to you is that you have every right to, even if your body feels horrible, you have every right to say, body, be healed. Somebody says, oh, you know, what's going on? Are you sick? No. I'm going to say, wait, wait, but look at you. Sniffling, sneezing, coughing, you know, red with fever or whatever it is. You're not sick. No, no. What, what's going on with your body? Oh, my body. My, yeah, my body. Now, my body's experiencing some symptoms. And, and yeah, it would be sick, but I'm not. Now, if you want to go through all that, you could do it and you'd be accurate. Is that right? Now, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. But the fact is, it's not you that's crazy. It's their mind that's messed up because your mind is in line with the Word of God. Amen. See, we get bullied into thinking, well, I want to be quiet because I don't want to sound like I'm crazy. No, they're crazy. <laughs> you get it? You have been, you've not been given a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. If there's anybody got a sound mind, it's you. Amen. Do you understand that? Now, I'm not saying deny symptoms. I'm just saying, oh, yeah, that's my body. Don't worry about that. I'm dealing with that. It's getting in line. It's acting up, and I'm getting in, it's getting in line. You know, it, it, it hung out with the wrong spirit for a bit. Okay, it, it entertained, you know, an enemy talking in its ear, whatever it is. You know, I mean, if they're going to think you're crazy, just go all the way, right? Okay, go on. <laughs> Have some fun with it. Amen.